Hi everybody, welcome to Norland Unwrap. This is our student support session. Um, I'm just going to wait for everybody to log in and hopefully everyone's going to be accessing the log on details and we'll just wait a few moments before we get started. But it's lovely to have you join us again this evening for our session. I can see the numbers going up, so that's good. The log ons work. And we'll give it about a minute and then we'll get cracking. Leave it a few more seconds. And then people can join us as and when. Well, so I'm going to make a start because we've got lots of really fantastic uh, things to go through this evening. So, Lexi, if you can turn the next slide for me, that would be brilliant. Wonderful. So, welcome to Norland Unwrap. This is our seventh session of Unwrap, and it's really lovely to have you join us. If you have been before, then you obviously know who I am. Uh, my name's Kate, if you haven't, and you must recognize my dulcet tone. So it's lovely the fact that you've joined us, and we're absolutely thrilled to have some of the amazing students join us this evening, as well as our student support team. So this is just some housekeeping, as we always go through at the very beginning of the session, just to let you know that the session will be recorded. Um, and it will be available for you to access afterwards. So if you need to nip off, that's absolutely fine. And then you can access it at your own convenience. Your camera is off and your microphone is muted. So you can we can't hear you and we can't see you. And as I said, this is our seventh Unwrap session. It's been a while since our last one, um, but this is our first session of this uh, new academic year. The rest of the sessions are always available on our website. So you can download those and have a look at those as well. And as I said, the reason why we do Norland Unwrap is to really bridge the gap between the, the physical and the virtual offerings that we do. So our next open day is in, in May. So we're going to have a couple of unwrap sessions, including this session, uh, to bridge that gap. So there will be a very short Q&A at the end. We have got a lot to get through. So if I can ask you to ask your, answer your questions through the, zap, uh, the Zoom button at the bottom of the screen. Um, if I can also say, if you do have any queries about admissions or applications about a certain course that you want to do and you want to find out a bit more, could I ask you to direct your email to our admissions team? Because obviously this session is all about student support. So we'd really like to answer any questions that you may have about that. Um, on our our next unwrap session is going to be in February and that's going to be all about life as a Norland student so we're going to have a, a very big panel of students hopefully taking part and that will tell uh, prospective students what it's really like to be a Norland student so that's it for me I'm going to hand you over to our wonderful student support team and our fantastic students who have very kindly given up their time this evening and I will see you at the end of the presentation as I said if you want to ask ask questions please feel free to pop them into the chat box thanks so much and I'm going to pass you over to the team thanks everybody good evening everybody thanks for joining us um my name's Alexia Jones as you can see on the slide I'm the student services and well-being manager here at Norland um, I've been here since April this year, so I'm fairly new. I haven't completed a whole academic year just yet, but um, I have to say that when I came through the doors of Norland um, for my interview, I felt the warmth and the care in the building, and I think that that is why I love working here. And um, I'm not fed up yet, which is great. Um, <laughs> So my route to New Orleans, um, it's a little bit of a, I've gone a little bit of a windy route, but I've always worked really with children and young people. Uh, I actually went to drama school after I left school, which incidentally, my sixth form building is the one I am sitting in right now. So I've gone full circle. Um, and I went to Italia Conti, which is a drama school in London for three years when I finished my A-levels. Um, and then I worked all, all over the place before coming back to the UK. Um, I've worked as a sports coach. I used to teach dance and drama to children and young people. I've worked with lots of children and young people who have um, come out of education for whatever reason. And I went on to join um, the Priory Group, which was a special needs school for children with autism. I was a PE assistant there. So that was really enlightening. Um, went back to uni and got a first class degree in sports performance. As you can see, it's quite checkered, but actually sports and performing actually go hand in hand. 
And then I moved into elite performance and I worked with the athletes and the players at Pentathlon GB and then also with some athletes um, at a school in Bournemouth. And then I went to Southampton Football Club where I was a manager of education and welfare. So a bit like Norland, very elite performance, um, young people, you know, Norlands, they do strive to be the best and they produce the best in their field. So it was quite a smooth jump, really, um, which I also went to through. I worked at Dyson Institute as well as a student support advisor. So I got a few um, qualifications in counselling skills and mental health awareness. I'm also a mental health first aider um, and I'm a happiness facilitator myself and my colleague Mog. So um, I hope that that brings a wealth of different knowledge to Norland so that I can help the uh, students here to achieve their potential and have the best journey that they can have. So I'm going to um, pass over to Mog now for her um, next slide. Hello, hi, I'm Mog Thurwell. I'm the student support officer for academic work mostly, um, although I do a bit of everything as well. Um, I'm also relatively new at Norland. I, I joined in August 2021 and um, after having been a teacher for quite a while, um, decided I fancied doing something a bit different. So I have, quite, again, like Lexi, quite a checkered background. Um, but 100 years ago, I started out as um, a hairdresser and um, went on to get married and have children and raise a family and I've worked all the way through and I went back to college um, when I was about 29 and did my um, health and social care background training and then did my master's in food, health and welfare. And I've got um, a diploma in leadership and management because I went straight from that to management and then um, my teaching diploma and I have an assessor's award and a verifier's award because I used to go out in amongst the community seeing people working in their workplaces. So it was it was really interesting work. Um, and I did travel 150 miles a day, so it got to the point where I was a bit, a bit fed up with all the driving. I've covered um, work in the private sector um, and in the public sector when I was in social work and I've worked within charity um, setups as well. I've been, uh, I was an acting manager in social work, which was quite ironic because I'm not a social worker but um, I was in charge of a team of them. So that was quite interesting. Um, went off to do management within community care. That was having care going into people's houses. I managed a residential care home for very old people with dementia. And then I managed a sheltered housing village with um, a group of very independent older people. Um, my assessing and verifying was all about work-based ad education. So I, I kind of covered lots of different stuff during that time. And I worked in a wide variety of um, service user groups. I worked with people with um, mental health issues, drug and alcohol addiction, um, adults with learning difficulties and um, older people. The older people have always been the ones I've come back to. But I did also have quite a, a, a lot of input working in um, a special educational needs school with people with autism. And um, that was quite an interesting time as well. Um, I've worked as a teacher all the way through from level one, right through to level four, when I taught law in health and social care. And um, the, the practical application side is I'm not a lawyer. And uh, yeah, lots of different experiences subjects in the background that I've done as well and um, medication and um, actually I did that not just teaching but actually when I was out assessing because we had to sign off people's competencies when they were working um, all kinds of stuff and uh, I too am a happiness facilitator I think in this world everybody should be happy if we were happy there wouldn't be quite so many wars going on um, I have a grown-up family, five grandchildren. My eldest grandchild is 22. I know that's hard to believe, given that I am obviously only 21. And, um, and my youngest one is 12. And uh, I've got these really lovely, naughty 
little dachshunds at home and I just love them. Um, I enjoy doing crafts and actually in college I do crafts with some of our students. It's great fun. Um, batch cooking because I think saucepans should be absolutely full and there should always be masses of food and I do like growing all my own vegetables it's really nice so yeah quite a varied background and, a, and hopefully that has brought quite a lot of different viewpoints to the job I have now supporting others. Nice to I, have, I have to say that um, Mog is a very kind and generous person having not known her for that long she's always bringing in lovely cakes to eat and sharing all her lovely craft resources that she's brought from home um so it's you know we work as a good team I would say myself and Mog even though I'm a huge football fan and she hates football but you know opposites <laughs> attract right but in that nice is <laughs> true with me it's rugby all the way but he <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll fight about that later <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the other um, part of student services um, so Mog and myself are the student support team um, there's only we I like to say that we are small but mighty so we do try to help out as much as we can but obviously with nearly 300 students here and we like to give an arm of support to some of the staff we're not always able to help everybody. So we have, are supported by the lovely, lovely library staff. And in that picture, you can see on the right-hand side, that's Kat and Liz, uh, the library manager and the library assistant. And they're always on hand. Um, the library is the sort of place, a very safe space. And one of either Kat or Liz is always in the library. And I think... Um, it, it lends itself to having a bit of a listening ear if that doesn't sound too strange because obviously you're not supposed to do loads of talking in a library. However, I think that they often get students coming to ask for advice and um, to ask for help, not just with their academic um, work, but in pastoral areas as well. So we work really closely with Kat and Liz to make sure that we can produce a wellbeing programme that can support every student with their needs. And then alongside that, you've also got your personal tutors. Now, everybody is allocated a personal tutor. I think probably the most amount of, um, you know, in a year group, I think a, a tutor might have, say, eight students or eight to 10 students each year group. So it's pretty um, attentive. Like they, they, they have the time to give you all that attention. And they're usually your first point of contact if you've got a problem and you can usually go to them or come to us or we'll talk with them or we'll discuss you know obviously with your consent things so that we can put a proper support package in place for you and they can give you advice on all sorts of things and they're very very approachable and friendly um, and I think that going back to my earlier point that's what comes across here at Norland that nothing is too much trouble anyone's here to help if you if you bumped into someone on the staircase and you were feeling like you needed some help or some support it doesn't matter if they're not your personal tutor or if they're not part of the student support team you can ask them for help and they will help you and I don't think that um you know it's quite an unusual situation to be in but I think it's um you you can just feel that in the building so I'm I'm quite proud of the work that everyone does here as a team so now I'm going to move on to the next slide where Mog's going to talk a little bit about the academic and learning support that we can provide as a student support team. Thank you, Lexi. Um, so mostly where academic support is concerned, we, we have lots of rules and regulations in about the things that we're allowed to do or not allowed to do. But essentially, when a student first comes here, if they have... Um, popped onto the UCAS form that they have, for example, dyslexia um, or any other um, learning um, difficulty, then my job will be to arrange reasonable adjustments. And so what myself and Lexi do is we meet with students, we have an assessment we go through, um, we have to have evidence so whatever evidence a student has, i.e. maybe they've had a dyslexia assessment done, then that comes into the assessment that we do. And then from there, if 
Um, it might be that a student's not sure if they have something. I can do a thing called dyslexia screening. I, I cannot tell you if you definitely got it, but I can screen for it. And then I suggest that you, you speak to someone who is professionally qualified to do that. In doing that, you're then able to apply for DSA, Disability Student Allowance, and this is non-means tested. It's non-refundable, so whatever they give you is yours. And it's really worth doing because we have quite a lot of students who um, require um, specific software in their computers or extra time for doing work and maybe a support worker in the background for the things that we're not allowed to help with. But what we can do is we can check all of the coursework that you've written. Um, we're able to look at spelling, grammar, punctuation, all that kind of stuff and referencing. Um, but we're also able to help with um, how you study and note taking, uh, reading, all kinds of stuff. It's a brand new thing for a lot of students to come into university and suddenly find how much they have to do. So we're there to support that. I also teach study skills sessions and um, primarily that's for the first years um, and I help with um, essay planning and presentation skills so it's really you know you're given a lot of support to help you with all that you have to do um, I'm not allowed to proofread per se or mark work that's not allowed I'm not allowed to write work for people or tell them what they can write. But I am allowed to talk about structure of essays. So if you have maybe missed a bit or something, I can help guide you in the right direction to go and find extra work for that. So yeah, I think we, we do quite a lot to support all of our students, but then it's, it's a benefit to them in, in the end. Can we have the next slide, please? So yeah, so as you can see with the amount of um, support that we provide, um, it's roughly one in seven. So that, I mean, that's, that is quite a lot of support. When I was teaching, I was a tutor as well as a lecturer and um, I had 66 people in my tutor group and you got approximately 10 minutes if you were lucky to spend with those people. So here we've got a, a much better balance and, and the support we can provide is a lot deeper. And it's not just us, it's across the, the tutors and the lecturers and our library team, lots and lots of people here who provide support. Um, the payoff for that, of course, is as you can see on this slide, that 78% of our students actually got a first class or 2-1 degree in the years 2020 to 21. And that is just incredible. That's really something. So, you know, it's, it shows that the support helps greatly in making sure students are successful in their outcome and that they go on to other things as well. So, okay. Thank you, Mog. Um... So I'm going to talk a little bit now about the pastoral support that we offer. So what we do is we deal with everything on a case by case basis. If somebody comes to me and they've got an issue, I will deal with that individual or Mark will deal with that individual as necessary at the time. So we look at all the different situa situational um, circumstances surrounding the issue and we might signpost them to um, other ways of helping them but we're not we don't have a hard and fast rule we don't say well if somebody comes with this issue we're going to do that because it doesn't work like that because we're dealing with individuals emotions feelings we're dealing with all sorts of things going on in a very very rapid moving environment so no problem is too small no problem is too big we can manage anything that comes through the door and we will do our best to try and help that person so things that we've dealt with, um, particularly at the start of the term, when we get in the new cohort, there's lots of homesickness. And that's quite common for people leaving home. I'm sure that there's millions of students all across the world that suffer with homesickness when they leave home. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a period of adjustment. It's a transition. So Morgan and myself did um, some transition lectures 
with each year group uh, prior to them to the um, breaking up for the summer so that they will be ready to start their new experience. And then when we got the new first years, we did the, all the welcome weeks um, activities, which is like the freshers week that they have at other universities, we call it welcome week, and just things to help people settle in. So for instance, we have, um, I mean, I'll go through these in more detail later, but we have buddy schemes, we have a here to here peer support scheme, lots of different things to help people feel settled and making friends. We have well-being advice. We can always signpost you to something, local services that you might not be aware of if you've not come from the city of Bath. We can signpost you to things that, um, to services that we're linked with or services that provide things nationally or things that you might not have thought of. We give welfare support. We have a student support page, a SharePoint page, which is like a little mini website and all of the information and contact details and links and websites and all of those sorts of things are on there, all the helpful stuff. So that if you didn't want to actually come and speak to someone face to face, you can just look on the website and you can on the SharePoint page and you can just decide for yourself what, how much or how little you want to do to put some support in place. We also provide a listening ear. We're totally non-judgmental. We don't have any thoughts about what's right, what's wrong. We don't think like that. You come and you've got a problem, we will listen and we will help where we can. It doesn't matter if, you know, if you think you've come in the office and you're ashamed that you've done something you didn't wish you, you, wish you hadn't done. We're not going to look at you like that. We're just going to take the problem at face value and we're going to try and help. And then we'll also coordinate care across Norland. We have something called traffic light, traffic lights meeting, um, which we have with the lecturing team. And this is just basically where staff may have noticed if a student is struggling in an area. It could be academics of academic area, or it could be something aside from their work. And then we would talk about how we need to intervene and help the student so that we can get them back on the right track. And all of these things are going on behind the scenes all the time. We're always looking at ways of helping people before it gets to crisis point. And then, of course, as Mog's already alluded to, to, we also offer the academic support, which can also come from the library team because they're really helpful at helping you referencing and, you know, using the library resources properly and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a really full package of support. I'm. Another of the things that we offer is we have two external counsellors who work with Norland um, and every student can access six sessions of free counselling from one of our counsellors. So this is something that we've started offering this year as a quite a new thing. Um, and we found it's working really well because they're totally detached from Norland. So a lot of students feel that it's a very safe space because they, even though Mog and myself, you know, everything that's said to us is confidential within safeguarding limits. Sometimes students feel that they want to see someone who's not connected with the college. So we've got the two counsellors. They're both based in Bath. They both have their own practice space, which is a private space off campus. And they both offer online and evening slots. So. It's really flexible. What happens is if you are having an issue, you can request to see a counsellor and we'll give you their contact details. And then you go off and make the arrangements with them. And then we don't need to know anything more unless they had a fear that you were in some kind of, um, you were going to be harmed or harm somewhere else or if it was a safeguarding concern. So everything you say to them, like us, is confidential. And this is a really good way of offering you the opportunity to manage any mental health difficulties that you might have before you come to Norland, or maybe some difficulties that you might have when you arrive or something that might happen or something that might happen in your family. So it's a really nice safety net for those people that need something a little bit more than the support that we can provide here. Because while Mog and I can provide you a lot of support and a listening ear and all of those you know, sort of some good advice and signposting. We're not trained counsellors. Therefore, it's good to have somebody who can offer some actually psychological therapy. 
So that's what we offer. And we think it we think it works really well. The counsellors are really lovely people and um, they've had some, you know, they they have been quite busy, I will say. But, you know, life's tough. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, so that's the counselling support that we offer. The other things that we can offer you are, I mentioned it earlier, we have the Norland Buddy Scheme and also we have Headspace. Now I'll talk about Headspace first. So Headspace, if you haven't heard of it, is an app and it's all about mindfulness. Now mindfulness sounds a bit airy-fairy, you know, I don't do meditation, I don't do mindfulness, but really it's just deep relaxation and it is scientifically proven to, to help with all sorts of problems. If you can be present in the present moment and mindful of how you are thinking and what you're doing and all of the actions that you take, then it helps you to be a happier, healthier person. And Headspace is a great tool. It's free for every student and every member of staff. And there's loads of things on there. So there are, um, if you were having a difficulty, a stressful time, there might be a program of stress that you can follow, which will be 10 sessions that you do one by one each day. And you can choose five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So even if you're new to mindfulness, you can just do it for a few minutes. And then you can do courses. They might have a course on anxiety, anxiety, just put my teeth back in. Or they might have a course on um, managing um, stress when you're approaching deadlines, study skills. They even have like study beats which is music that you can put on that help you to focus better when you're studying. So there's all sorts of things on there. So we offer that free to every student, which is amazing. It's a year's um, free membership. Um, and I also do a weekly mindfulness, live mindfulness on Teams as well with anyone that wants to join. It's just a little 10, 15 minute tune in Tuesday, we call it. So we do really work, work in that way. And then we have the buddy volunteers. So the buddy scheme is a new thing from this year. We had 30 volunteers from SEP 45, which is the second years, and they offered their services to help the new first years to settle in. And they have been absolutely fantastic. They all, they've been visiting them in their new houses when they're in their student accommodation. They've set up um, different kind of socials. Uh, I think they had a picnic. I think they've had like a pub crawl. I think they've had like all sorts of different things, a WhatsApp group. So if anyone's worried about anything when they first come to Norland, they can go to their buddy. And each buddy has about four or five buddies. Each buddy volunteer has four or five to look after. And it just helps them to have a friend here when they arrive. So that if you're feeling a bit worried about coming to a new city and starting university you can be put in touch with your buddy before you start and you can build up a bit of rapport and some of the buddies work together so the volunteers so you might have two households that are joined and also we we um, allocate them into groups so that if you're a commuter student and you're not living in the student accommodation you become a virtual housemate so you'll also get a buddy so that you're not left out so this has been a really great thing. And actually, um, we do have um, Sophia is a Norland buddy. So she might be able to talk a bit about that later. Um, and Arabella as well. You're a Norland buddy, aren't you? A body volunteer. And Ollie's ha Ollie has a Norland buddy volunteer. So, but it's brilliant. They've all been fantastic. So I believe I'm passing to Mog now to just talk about some of the other resources we okay. offer. Okay, so um, we do provide masses of support, but all of us are able to go home as well. And so in the background, we have a 24-7 um, set up together all, and they're really good. You can talk, well, you can put messages on a, a wall. It doesn't have to be face-to-face. -face. It can be quite confidential. And you can just ask questions. Somebody else who has either had experience of it or who um, is going through it might have really good ideas to help you feel supported and cared for. And the fact that it's anonymous means that um, it, it, you're, you're not going to be, um, I don't like this term, but found out really. It is your private area. So it really does work. 
very, very well. And quite a lot of students use it. Um, we also have our lovely Here to Hear group. And um, these are our peer support group. These um, students are all trained to be able to um, support students who are going through difficult times and to signpost them to the correct person or area for extra support if that's required. Um, and actually, our Sophia is a here to hear person, aren't you, darling? So um, lots and lots of good support from people. Yeah, it's, it works. And uh, I see lots of happy students here. So obviously, all the support that's going in is working, I would say. Um, yeah. Thank okay, you, Mark. So I think I'm going to hand over to um, Arabella now to talk a bit about her experience of student support. Hi everyone, um, my name is Arabella and I am a second year student at Norland. Um, I'm 22, which is crazy. Um, I like the last four years have just flown by. So I am from Cumbria, that's where my parents live, um, but I moved to Guernsey when I left school. So five years ago no that's a lie three years ago so um so I've kind of spent my time between my parents house in Guernsey with my boyfriend in um sorry in Cumbria and my boyfriend in Guernsey and Bath so I'm like spread really thinly um before I came to Norland I did A levels um I did geography English language and health and social um, and I had two gap years. So in, in those two years, I worked as a nanny in Guernsey, um, which was amazing and um, would highly recommend going and having a year out because it definitely, definitely helped me um, get myself together. Um, I was diagnosed with ADD, which is attention deficit disorder. So it's kind of like ADHD, but apparently I don't have the hyperactive bit which a lot of my family would disagree with. <laughs> so um, so that means I struggle to concentrate for long periods of time. So I, I find writing um, assignments really difficult, along with having dyslexia, which um, just adds another level of dif difficulty. Um, so I chose Norman because I love working with children and... I just really wanted to work with as many children as I possibly could. And Norland gave me that, that opportunity. Um, like Mog and Lexi have mentioned, the Norland family, um, when I came to um, one of the open days, I, I just felt immediately like I wanted to be part of the family. And when people say it's like one big family, I always thought, oh, well, surely it's not that good. But it really is. We really are all really good friends. And all of the lecturers are always happy to welcome you um, if you've got any worries. And the same with Mog and Lexi. Um, and like Mog mentioned before about the student satisfaction, um, everyone that left Norland said how amazing it was. So I was just like, get me there. Really wanted to, really wanted to be part of it. Um, in my first year, I've made so many amazing friends. Um, and in my second year, I've met so many of the new first years. Um, Ollie is one of my really good friends. And I've completed five placements and passed all of the assignments that I handed in last year. So that's a big achievement for me because um, that was something I was really worried about um, when I joined. Um, can we have the next slide? Sorry. Um, so how student support helped me? So MOG is just the best for anything academic, even if you just need a little well done for getting it done. Um, I always go to MOG just to do a little spell check or check my references are okay. They're usually not perfect, but... Um, and also just, you know, having a conversation with Mog just, a, or just about, even just to air what you're worried about um, during, about the assignment. If you just go 
and sit with her and she'll just give you some advice for how to plan or um you know just reassure you that, that you're either on the right track or help you get onto the right track um personal support so I am a buddy in fact Ollie is one of my buddies um and so when they first arrived in September um myself and one of the other buddies who um has some buddies within Ollie's house went round and we just introduced ourselves and since then they've got in touch with us just about I mean mostly um in touch about work because obviously it can be it can be quite stressful so talking to a another student that's that obviously did it last year I think um I don't want to speak for Ollie but I think she found it quite helpful um and also things going on on a, on a personal level so if any of them have something that they're just worried about or you know within the house things can go wrong um just having someone to talk to and the same goes for the counselling um which I haven't personally used but I know people who have and have found that really helpful to have um like Lexi mentioned someone kind of a step away from Norland that you can just air your issues to that um that there's no not that Lexi or Mog have any prejudgments but there is no prejudgment from from their um you know when you when you need that just someone to talk to you basically um Norland have provided um financial support so that can also be a real stress for I mean especially at the moment for most people um so we've they've brought in something called the hardship fund which is an extra bit of money for, for us all to use to help towards the cost of living crisis which is an, an incredible thing that they've put together for us um on Thursday we've got financial advisor session so um they go they're going to talk us through how to budget, how to save, um, different methods we can use for all those kind of money related things, which is really helpful um, for me because I'm rubbish with anything to do with money. Um, and social support. So there's an amazing board committee for the second year. So we do, there's all sorts of stuff going on all the time. There's always a pub quiz going on or, um, an event in college so we've got Christmas jumper day tomorrow so there's always something that brings people together um like I said before and like the big family northern spirit um so yeah like just basically definitely come to Northern if you think about it because we're all we'll welcome you with open arms and Mog and Lexi are amazing at their job so there's always someone to talk to and um yeah if you need any help I think I'm passing back to Mark. No, Sophia. <laughs> Thank you for those kind words, Annabella. Hi, I'm Sophia and I'm in second year now. I'm from Hertfordshire and I'm the youngest of four. Um, I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was seven, so I managed to get help through DSA, which was very helpful. And I'm part of the Here to Hear and Buddy schemes. Um, before coming to Norland, I did a level three diploma in art and design, so not very traditional. It was a bit out of the box, but I wanted to do something a little bit different before coming, so I'd have a different perspective when I arrived. Um, I chose Norland because I really liked the community when I went to the open day. It was very like welcoming and it felt like the right place to be. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So in my first year at Norland, I had academic support with Mog, she was very helpful. Um, she gave us masterclasses on essay writing and referencing and just understanding how to dissect the briefs for the assignments, which was great. Um, I was asked lots of questions on my nanny account from prospective students throughout last year and this year, which are great because then I get to meet them at the open days, which is nice. And throughout last year, I was in the Norland Choir, and I am this year as well. And we get to sing through lots of different events, like tomorrow we have the carol singing outside the Abbey. And I also had support from the Here to Hear scheme in first year, which is why I wanted to do it this year, so I could kind of give back the support I was given last year. 
And the last slide, please. <laughs> So now I'm in the here to here scheme and the buddy scheme. Um, I've had various people come for different support about just houses or assignments. And it's very nice to be able to chat to people in first year now. Uh, we had a few socials this year. We had roller skating. Uh, that was in September and it was from all sets. And we also have a weekly uh, sewing club now run by students to help you catch up on sewing assignments. Um, and that is all. I think I'm passing on to Ollie now. Hi everyone, I'm Ollie. I'm in SAT 46, so I'm in my first year here at Norland. I am 18 years old and I'm originally from Reading in Berkshire, but my parents have just relocated to Maryland in America. Um, I struggle with dyslexia and dyspraxia. Um, before coming to Norland, I studied A-levels in religious studies, photography and art and design. Uh, I chose Norland as Sophia and Arabella have both mentioned because of the family community I felt when I came for my open day. Also the unique training that we have access to. Um, the split study between the degree and the diploma seemed really beneficial to me because I'm much more hands-on and practical than I am with academic writing and the reputation and name to uphold as a Norland nanny is something that is really special to me. Next slide please. Um, so student support has helped me in many ways. Uh, struggling with dyslexia, student support has offered supported me with essay writing help and techniques from both Mog and Lexi. Um, I have been given access to the same exam considerations I was given at school so I have extra time and separate invigilation, which has been taken into consideration. Um, and staff has have also made me aware of the DSA, as previously mentioned, which is funded by the government to provide support for academic or physical str struggles. So they helped me through the application process. Um, and for personal help, both Mog and Lexi have helped me come to terms with my parents move earlier on this term. And it's quite a big one. Um, and they have also helped me settle into the Norland way of life, ensuring that my mental and physical well-being is always the focus. Next slide, please. So I've only been at Norland a couple of months, but I've had lots of amazing experiences. So in my first few weeks, I completed my level three paediatric first aid. Um, I've been part of the student team at the most recent open day. So answering any questions prospective students may have. Um, I've completed a lot of evening babysitting jobs and weekend jobs, courtesy of the marvellous babysitting app and the Norland Job Shop, which are both really useful to get a little bit extra cash. Um, I've made lifelong friends. Luckily for me, I knew one of my housemates prior to starting, so that made settling in a lot easier. Um, I'm, as Sophia also mentioned, I'm also part of the Norland Choir and was fortunate of enough to sing in Bath Abbey a couple of weeks ago alongside choirs from across the Bath and Somerset area and tomorrow we'll be singing at the Christmas market and I'm currently in my penultimate week of my first placement working in the baby room at a nursery. I think I am handing back to Lexi. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, all your insights. Um, to Ollie and Arabella and Sophia. It's really good to hear feedback, you know, because they don't actually tell us these things, how great we are. <laughs> but it's really lovely to hear. And um, it, I mean, there's nothing more rewarding than being able to help somebody or being able to empower them to help themselves, which really is the dream, um, so that we can give people the tools so that they can go off into the wide world after Norland and be self-sufficient and be able to help others. So that's the that's really the ideal scenario. And to help students do that, we have other resources that we also um, we also offer. So we do weekly wellbeing workshops. And these are things that so what we did is with the library team or the lovely library team, as I like to call them, uh, we came up with a heading or a theme for each month. So this month, November is kindness. Um, in October, it was opportunity. And next month in December, it's going to be gratitude. 
Um, we try and do, we do lunchtime sessions in our nursery where myself and Mog, they're drop-in sessions, so totally voluntary. People could just drop in and come and join in what we're doing. So once a month, we might do a couple of sessions of study skills. So Mog will lead those and it's extra academic work or just to bring a piece of work or whatever you want to talk about. Um, we have something which Mog also does. In fact, it is a bit of the Mog show the well-being workshops but that's because <laughs> that's because she's so talented um, oh, I wish. <laughs> so we do knit and natter which has been very popular so if you can come and learn to knit or just come and knit it's very therapeutic knitting just like clacking away on your needles and you just have a little chat um we do crafts so for instance in december we've only got two like well-being workshops and they're both going to be christmas crafts where we're going to do lots of different exciting things. We did create a collage. We did um, uh, some share a snack. That was a nice one. Everyone came down and gorged on Doritos. In fact, I think Sophia was particularly interested in the My Doritos. <laughs> um, and it's just a chance to just take like the, your mind off things that are going on and just come and have a safe space to just come and chat and, and unwind. So, and then on top of that, I've already mentioned that we do the student support um, little mini website, the SharePoint page. So Mog writes in all a newsletter every month, which has got lots of tips and things like December's um, edition has got all sorts of stuff about um, study skills. Because obviously it's this time of year that everybody's doing, they've got deadlines to meet and assignments to, to um, deal with. Mm -hmm. so and she's also put some terrible christmas cracker jokes i have to say they are I terrible they were rather funny <laughs> <laughs> there we go there's that divide <laughs> <laughs> but you know it is it is the christmas edition so it you know it, it fits there um and we have the vir library virtual notice board where people can put on the padlets and things where people can ask for things that they need and we'll see if we put that support in place like a bespoke service we do lots of top tips that we give out on our sharepoint page and then we do meetings at the open day so mog and i will um be there all day at open days to talk about anything that you might have bring to us or any worries and we also just recently with kate did the virtual open day so a little bit similar to this but it was a much broader range and mog also wrote the little book of information so when you're new to bath it's got everything in there from bus timetables where to go at night where you can go and get a nice veggie pasty you know which way is a good cut through to walk down to the local nightclub and everything um and then yeah, we frequent nightclubs a lot then <laughs> <laughs> But we've we've also um, on a more serious note, um, we've had um, we've had some workshops uh, from delivered by a local police officer recently about how to stay safe in Bath. Those are ongoing at the moment, just so that people can be aware of where they can get help and what helps available. And we're going to do some some work with consent and um, and those sorts of things um, as well coming up in the new year. So it's all a wrap around support just seeing that we've got every angle and we've tried to offer support in every way that we can so i'm now going to i finished talking now you might be glad to say hooray she's not going to talk anymore i'm going to pass you back to um kate to just um wrap up the session but thank you very much for listening it's been really enjoyable thank you very very much i've learned loads it's been brilliant really really good thank you so much so we do have a couple of questions um, and then I'll give you some more information about other things that we've got coming up as well. So the first question that we've come in, I'm going to read it off the Q&A. So forgive me. Um, I think this is basically what you're uh, how you're explaining the academic support side, Mog, earlier on. Um, and the question that we've got is if you can refer back to what you were saying was, does this include helping in the early writing process? So any kind of support organizing ideas, helping the student through the steps of getting ideas to the final product? How involved are you in the in the, the early stages of their writing? So I can talk about planning. Um, I can I can't tell a student what to write, but what I can do is I can look at an essay title 
and I can ask questions of that student to try and get them to focus on what the essay title is saying to them and what it's asking for. And then we can start planning and mind mapping or however it is they choose to plan the, the way forward with that. I can talk about structure of an essay. Um, I've actually just done a quick document on um, different writing techniques and skills. So for example, your punctuation and different things that people need to know in order to be able to produce an essay properly. Um, and I'm also able to look at a percentage of students' work when they've mapped out some of what they're about and I can check it to make sure they're, they're going down the right route. Um, but I can't talk about content, so they, they've still got to do all their reading. But I, I also can support in terms of the, the reading part because when you read well, your writing is good. Um, you know, once you've read and you understand the topic and you take the notes, I'm, I can tell them a lot about note taking, then that helps with that. So I hope I've answered that question. Yeah, that sounds very explanatory to me. Thank you very much. Now I've got a question. Yes, sorry. yes, yes. I'm really sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to um, add that when I applied for the DSA, you can... Um, you also can be given an academic tutor, um, which obviously is Mog's job, but she also has 300 other students to look after. So um, I have like a one-to-one -one tutor that does the same thing as Mog. So if you're entitled to DSA, I would strongly advise. Good using, point. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so. Fantastic. They're not as good as Mog, obviously, but you know. <laughs> Nobody's as good as Mog. We love Mog. Right. <laughs> you're not going anywhere you're staying there um so i do have a question for the students now this is a question i think if you can maybe take it in turns and answer and i think we get this question quite often is really to how would you advise someone who is looking to apply to norland um and obviously i found out about it you know, what's your kind of top tips that they kind of need to kind of prepare for or what to look out for? Are there any kind of really good um, top tips that you can give them to, you know, when they want to apply? I think that's quite a nice question, especially if they have maybe got dyslexia or, you know, ex additional learning difficulties. How would you advise them? And I'll start with you, Arabella, if that's OK. Yeah, so um, so it's quite difficult I don't know um I when I when I applied I, I don't know if this I don't know if everyone did this but I wrote two um personal statements one that was like fully focused on Norland and obviously I was aware that I wasn't you know I wasn't 100% sure I was going to get in so I applied to a couple of other universities and I needed to have a personal statement that was kind of adaptable so I sent that one off to UCAS and I sent my individual one to Norland and I think I think that's something they say you're allowed yeah, to do yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so you send that off to admissions um other top tip like just don't worry about the academic work like obviously you have to work really hard there's a lot of work involved with within the course but it's really manageable if you set aside the right time to do things you know I have seven assignments due in this two-week period and that seems really daunting but actually if you set aside the time um because in the 16 weeks of term before that I had no assignments to do so I've like spread it out so if you are prepared the work is so manageable so that's my top tip of advice for that's someone. that's a really that. that's a really good that's a really good top tip time management absolutely I think we all do we all need to do the best work better yeah. than that. I know I do definitely um Ollie what about you as yeah. your first year I was just going to say top in with Arabella I did exactly the same so I wrote two personal statements one tailored to Norland and one for other childcare degrees um and I found that really beneficial because then I sold myself as much as I could to Norland as well as other unis, but emphasizing your passion for childcare because obviously Norland is the place to study childcare. So making sure that you express your love for children. If like me, you didn't have any prior formal childcare experience, just try and explain how much, how much time you're willing to put into it and how dedicated you can be and just express yourself. Um, so the biggest thing that I was told at school was try to be 
just be yourself not be don't be the person they want you to be so make sure that you're expressing who you are not who you think you should be lovely how about you sophia um i was a little bit different with the application process because i only applied for norland so i didn't have to worry about the personal statements like sending them separately i looked at other universities because my college made me but i was very set on norland and I wrote the personal statement completely for Norland. So just very childcare focused rather than broad if I was applying for different subjects as well. Um, I definitely agree with the time management point. That one was a big one, especially now, as I said, we have a lot of assignments due. We've got four academic ones due in the next two weeks. And for me, I was looking at like late, like four weeks before they were due, kind of like, which ones can I get done earlier? Like which ones can I start so I at least have less to do later on and that was very helpful but definitely don't let like dyslexia or another learning difficulty stop you from applying because there's a lot of support here if you need it. I think it, if I could just say that um, it, it is tough you know it's a tough tough course it's two it's a degree and a diploma alongside each other so as long as you've got your head around that that it's going to be hard work it isn't going to be like another um university degree where you do six hours a week and then just loaf off all the rest of the time it's hard work however the rewards are huge and I think that the sense of achievement that a lot of the students get when they've come through this process and the skills that they're equipped with you know if you decided five years down the line that you don't want to be an all and nanny anymore you want to do something else there's so many skills that you've been equipped with because the diploma is so in-depth and so amazing so I just think exactly what the girls have said you know preparation is key we can help you with all the time management and just don't be put off if it's what you want go for it lovely also don't be put off by friends you might have that are at uni at a mainstream uni because it's not we I mean we still have fun we still go out we still enjoy our time in Bath but we have a lot more work than your average student. And so don't compare um, mainstream unis really to Norland because they're not really comparable um, when, when you're like, decide, well, they are comparable, but you know what I mean? Like the workload is, is like double because it's two courses. I think that's really good. Actually talking about the diploma, we have had a question and it's actually directed at you, Mog, specifically. Oh. Do you offer any additional support with sewing? Thank you. <laughs> but because obviously you're a, you're you're the you're the crafty crafter, aren't you? So um yeah, well um you know I don't offer any other support with sewing other than um if somebody's showing me their work and they're not sure what they're doing with it and the lecturers aren't around, I might have an opinion on it, but I'm I'm not really a sewing person. Um, in saying that though, what I can help with is the written stuff. So every single piece of the diploma, you have a reflection to write. So I can help with that um, and help students to understand what it is they're reflecting on. So yes, I can do that part quite well actually, <laughs> but not the sewing itself. <laughs> Am I okay just to jump in quickly regarding absolutely, sewing? absolutely. Um, as I can't remember who said it, but someone previously mentioned that there is a student-led sewing group on a Monday afternoon, so you don't have to. Mm-hmm. If you find um the lecture is quite daunting, having a student-led session is really nice because then it's people. It I think it's led by second years, so it's people who are doing the same projects that you did last year, so they can explain like how it gets marked and what to do. Fantastic. That is all we've got time for on the questions because it was just so lovely to hear from everybody. So if I can ask Lexi to turn the next slide for me, that would be great. Um, If you do have any additional questions and you think, oh my goodness, I never asked it, please do feel free to email the inquiries email and they'll be able to answer your questions and get back to you. We also have some top tips um, and FAQs on our website. So you're more than welcome to have a look at that. So I'm just going to very briefly um, finish off with regards to what we've got happening as well. We have launched our third 
weekend in Bath competition. And this is a really smashing competition. We've done it. Uh, we had our two winners come back in May. And this basically coincides with our May Open Day. And it is an all expenses paid, and I mean all expenses paid, trip to Bath. You get to experience Bath. We put you up in a wonderful hotel. You get to have your travel all paid for. And you also get a lovely after tea, afternoon tea at the famous pump rooms as well. And this is open to year 10, 11, 12, 13 and level three students or their international equivalents if you are joining us this evening from an international perspective. Um, and like I said, more information is on our website. All the terms and conditions are on there as well um, and how to enter, etc., as well as the competition deadline as well. So if I can ask you to turn the next page as well for me please and that's basically it so what we've got coming up next is again we've got our open day and I, as I said before and some of the talks that I've done it's a really good opportunity to come back and really get to meet staff and students and to really experience Norland and I think some of the girls tonight have said how when they came to an open day it really did make that decision for them so it is a really op a fantastic opportunity to do that as I mentioned we're going to have our student life Norland Unwrap session in, in um, February so there's a lovely opportunity to find out everything you need to know about life as a Norland student we also have our tap the ambassador platform on our website so if you want to get in touch with our students you can so you can go onto our website you'll see a little chat box that says live chat and you can pick one of the students that reflects you, your background, et cetera, and they'll be more than happy to answer your questions. No, there is no such thing as a silly question. They will answer them and they'll be really happy to hear from you. Sign up to our mailing list. You can request a prospectus, but the mailing list is a really good way of finding out what's happening at Norland. And you also get the first sneaky peeks of videos uh, and stories, et cetera. So it's a really good opportunity for you to do that. So it just really leaves me to say a massive thank you to Mog, to Lexi, to Ollie, to Arabella and to Sophia. It's been fantastic to listen to you um, and I wish you all the best with the rest of your assignments. Sounds like a very busy couple of weeks and thank you so much and thank you out there for joining us and we will see you at the next Norland Unwrap. So thank you and have a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.